Hello, my name is Alan and this little film is about the enigma which is Roger Moore, the actor who played James Bond and the Saint, etc. And his connections with Bradford, because he did have some. But did he ever live here? Or was it a Chinese whisper? Watch the film, you'll see Roger appear in it later on and you'll hear from the horse's mouth. And now when I was web manager to Uri Geller, I got him, Michael Jackson, his pal, and Roger Moore to be members of the Idol Working Men's Club. You owe me a pint. <laughs> okay, I hope you enjoy the film. Hello. Okay, my name's Alan. I'm going to give you a little story today. It's a true story. A little bizarre, but true. Um, it's all about Roger Moore, because uh, I was his web manager from 2002. And before I actually got the gig and then before I'd met him, I lived in Bradford. Now, I knew Roger had a connection with Bradford because he was on the board of directors of Pearson and Foster's, which is a, a mill. And they'd made the clothes for some of the Saint and definitely quite a lot of the clothes for the Persuaders. So I knew that was true. I'd remembered it from being a child, a mill and the connection with Roger. So I looked into, remember before I'd met him, uh, did he live here? How the persuaders when it was first brought to you, the idea by your friend Bob Baker and partner. Yeah. Um, did you like the idea, and did it develop differently Which while you were persuaders? Th yeah. Uh, no, we we, we discussed the, 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 uh, what it was like instead of just being the same to try uh, two men, which always worked, like Spencer Tracy, Clark Gable, that sort of buddy. Buddy, buddy. But. A buddy movie, um, and we had we did an episode of the Saint with uh, an, an American actor. And I was told by loads of people that he did live in Bradford. And it's really weird. I'll give you a few quick stories. I'll show you one of the properties that was I was definitely told was Roger's house. So we'll get off, and I'll tell you a couple of stories on the way, and then we'll see what you think, because. It's quite interesting how the old Chinese whisper that's good, I couldn't shut the door then. Chinese whisper produces these. We'll be there in a minute. Oh, Stuart Damon. Stuart Damon. Yeah, I remember, yes. And, uh, it worked very well with him being a Texan. Yes, I've seen it. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty rare for a Yorkshireman to give anyone a free meal. What have you done to earn today's? I think by helping spread the word around the world that Yorkshire cloth is best. How difficult has it been to spread that word? Oh, well, physically it's a little tiring, you know, it's sort of tearing from country to country. But it's not difficult when you've got good quality product in your hand to sell. Is it difficult to sell that product, though? Is there much competition? Well, there's competition from all over the world. Mm -hmm. But England still, you know, and particularly Yorkshire, has a magic name in cloth. What sort of class go best abroad? I, well, I think, the, you know, sort of in various weights. I think the, the funniest thing I found was in Singapore, where they're sort of selling sort of miles away, and they want 16-ounce cloth. Now, you know how heavy that is yeah. in that climate, you know, with that humidity, but they feel that's the way they dress in Europe. So that's the way they want their suits made. How did you first become interested in cloth? Uh, well, I, I was approached. Uh, by David Wilkinson and Pearson Foster a few years ago and it didn't sort of come out of the blue because I already knew what Pearson and Foster was in the Saint I suppose I must have gone through about 30 suits, 40 suits a year and I found that certain of the suits lasted longer than others because of the cloth it was Pearson and Foster so it was a pleasant surprise when David got in touch with me Did you have to do a lot of studying of cloth before you could go out and sell it? Uh, well, I've had the sort of the quick tour around the mills and everything else, and I've sat and listened, and I've learned a lot. I learned a great deal more actually going out on the road mm -hmm. and listening to what buyers had to say about it, and sort of picking their brains. Do you regard this as an insurance against the days when you're no longer the saint or a film actor? I've seen a couple of my pictures, and I feel I should have a little insurance. <laughs> okay, so I'm walking through Shipley Glen towards this property which is um, nice but as I say he didn't live there um, and in actual fact during the time that I was 
doing the website this is before i actually did the website i was trying to get it's a long story that get access to roger's website which i did eventually but um i was told by loads of people that he lived in bradford because of this connection this is a house in Bailden bradford lots of people used to say that roger lived here even the people in the old people's home said they used to see roger wandering past for a pint on a Saturday evening, but he never did live there. You know, there was um, there was a lodge called Moor Lodge near Haworth, near Ponder Mills, and the local Telegraph and Argus historian reporter said Roger lived there. It's a fantastic building, actually, but it's a it's a furniture shop now. In fact, there's other stories that I'm not even going to bother saying. Well, one quick one. There was a flat and a local policeman said one of the local bobbies knows that Roger Moore owned that flat in Charlestown, Shipley. Which were all in Bradford, but he lived in none of them. Now, this is the property that the lady who owned told me that Roger Daphne lived in this property at around that time. And it's absolute rubbish. It's coming up, if you can see it. Look, it's a nice area. It's building, it's Shipley Glen. Nice place, Shipley Glen, look. <coughs> Corner of building moors. So yeah, it's a nice spot, and maybe if Roger had wanted somewhere to live, <coughs> this would have been okay. But he didn't. He used to fly up with Derek Wilkinson, do his work, and go back to L Street Studios. Right, just wait till this bike goes so I don't get mowed down. Right, here we go. God, I just love motorbikes. They sound like 10 cars together. That's it. It's a Chinese, it's a Chinese, it's a Spanish double fronted cottage with a stream. So it's nice. It's nice, look. So basically, the moral of the story is that. Don't believe these celebrity stories by word of mouth because they're often not true. And um, the number of people that told me in later years, when Roger used to answer six questions every month, which I chose, you know, from the, the fans. And there were so many that used to come through and say, oh, Roger lived in my town, he lived in my village, he lived a... Just a, a, a local question, um, Pearson and Foster's, I bet most people don't ask this because it's more interesting to me, but did you enjoy the, you know, Pearson and Foster's and the directorship and yeah, David was, Wilkinson? Yeah, it was interesting, I learned about warp and weft and yeah. Lord knows what about cloth. Yeah. Uh, and all the clothes I wore in Persuaders, of course, were Pearson and Foster's. Were made there, weren't they, yeah. But unfortunately it went belly up. It did, yeah, yeah. Did you ever go to Idle, the little village behind it? It's an unusual village called Idle, with the Working Men's Club. Well, I, 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 went, I went to the, uh, the mills, but I called the mill, yes, I suppose it is a mill. It is a mill, yes. Uh, in, in Bradford, I knew it was not Bradford, Bradford. <laughs> Uh, but I don't remember going to a village called Idle. No, it's famous for the Idle Working Men's Club where it's leaning on the spade, you see. It's Idle Working Men. <laughs> no, it's one of those rumours, but there's, I mean, the number of people that have said you've lived in certain places and you never have done. It's no. amazing, isn't it? <laughs> you've lived everywhere. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, they have buses going. So it's so much longer. There's a bus tour in Bournemouth. Yeah, <laughs> and they live on the top, on the top part of the floor apartment. The, in Denmark, there are places where I'm supposed to own <laughs> houses and apartments. Strange. Never did, never did. Weren't true. <laughs> and now on to the Idle Working Men's Club in Bradford. Because I was Sir Roger Moore's web manager and Uri Geller's, I got both of them, along with Uri's friend Michael Jackson, to become members of the club. It gave them a little bit of publicity and it was my pleasure. I also got my personal dream. I was the first person to interview Tony Curtis about his involvement in The Persuaders, my favourite programme as a teenager, and it was the only extensive interview on that programme with him. He was a great guy, 
very down to earth and lots of fun. He was uh, the Bronx, the Manhattan, and um, Roger is the uh, Englishman that possibly wanted to be the Rod. Now, we, shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't equate it to our nationality. No. Much, as much as we equate it to our character. I was more of a, uh, a daredevil. I was more of a guy that didn't take uh, the norm for granted. I was the kind of a guy that was always taking chances and everything he lived and liked. He had a lot of great successes, but every now and then he wouldn't uh, win it all. And so that what made his character what so appealing. Now, Roger's person was a very staid and solid person, someone you could rely on, someone you knew that wouldn't let you down. If you're interested in the interview with Tony Curtis and myself about the Persuaders, it is online. So that's the end of this little film about Roger Moore and the fact that he didn't live in Bradford, but he did have connections with it through Pearson and Foster's. If you've enjoyed the film, please subscribe, ding the bell for future videos, leave a comment and a thumbs up would be lovely if you want to do that also. Thank you very much. Bye-bye for now. Take care.